All right. So uh, we're diving into Morgan Stanley's latest earnings. And wow, 32 percent profit surge. And that's impressive. Mm -hmm. They're like crushing it. What's the what's the first thing that really stood out to you when you saw these reports? You know, it is a strong quarter, even for a behemoth like Morgan Stanley. But the thing that I find really fascinating is this balance they've struck. Oh. You've got their investment banking division, which is frankly booming right now. A 56% jump in their fixed income underwriting revenue, it's unheard of. Yeah, that's massive. I mean, that's unheard of. It really is. But at the same time, it sounds like their wealth management business is quietly building like its own little empire over there. Precisely. Over $7.5 trillion in assets under management. It's wild. They're playing the long game, and it seems to be paying off big time. Yeah. But the question is, how are they winning on both of these fronts, right? What's the strategy at play here that's leading to this two-pronged success? Yeah, that's what I want to know. It's like they figured out how to thrive in any economy. Okay, so let's, let's bring it down. Let's start with this investment banking surge. I mean... Didn't 2023 throw everyone in that sector for a bit of a loop? What what changed? You're absolutely right. 2023 was a challenging year for pretty much everyone in the financial sector. But what Morgan Stanley did was almost counterintuitive. They doubled down on this thing called fixed income underwriting, like just as others were pulling back. And that's where this like 56 percent jump in revenue is coming I'll from. I'll take a chunk of it. Yeah. OK, so. For those of us who you know don't have Wall Street as our first language, remind me what fixed income underwriting actually is. Yeah, so essentially imagine them as the ultimate matchmakers, but for really, really big loans. Okay. So you've got companies, you've got governments, they need funding, right? So they issue something called bonds. Morgan Stanley comes in and they act as the facilitator. They connect these institutions with investors who want to buy those bonds. And with interest rates becoming more favorable, the demand for this kind of financing, it just exploded. And Morgan Stanley, perfectly positioned to ride that wave. So they basically predicted the comeback of bonds before it was cool. You could say that. It wasn't just luck, though. Their analysts really understood the underlying mechanics of the market. They saw the writing on the wall and realized that as interest rates fell, companies would be eager to refinance their existing debt, creating this perfect storm for, well, bond issuance. Wow. Talk about reading the financial tea leaves. OK, let's shift gears for a second to this wealth management like behemoth they've got going on. Seven point five trillion dollars in client assets. I can't even fathom that much money. How are they reeling in clients at this rate? It's honestly less about flashy tactics and more about building trust and stability. Like when you look at their fee based flows, right, they hit thirty six billion dollars just this past quarter. That's clients trusting Morgan Stanley, not just with trades, but with their long term wealth their future. So it's less about chasing those quick returns and more about building like a steadier, more reliable source of income for both them and the client. You got it. And honestly, this stability, super appealing in these uncertain economic times, it's no wonder they've attracted an insane amount of new assets, like $64 billion worth this quarter alone. It's insane. Like they've built a financial fortress that people are like lining up to get into. Right. But what's the draw beyond the stability, right? Are there any like specifics about what's attracting all these new clients? Well, that's where things get even more interesting because it's not just about stability anymore. They're really positioning themselves at the forefront of, well, innovation in the wealth management industry. Oh, really? Yeah. They're embracing technology and they're doing it in a way that few others are. You know what? Now that you mention it, I did see some buzz about them, specifically about their use of AI. Exactly. But what are they actually doing with it? Like, how are they using it to set themselves apart? Well, that's the real story here, isn't it? Because they're not just dipping their toes in the water. They're diving in headfirst. All right. So we've got this investment banking powerhouse, this wealth management magnet, and now a hint of cutting edge technology. It's like Morgan Stanley has a few tricks up their sleeve. Where do we even begin to unravel this next layer? So they're using AI to like... I don't know, enhance their wealth management services. It feels like every company's talking about AI these days, but what are they actually doing that's so different? It goes way beyond just simple automation, right? They're yeah. actually using AI to like empower their financial advisors and create this whole other level of personalized experience for their clients. Okay, how so? So imagine you've got these algorithms that can analyze like thousands of data points about a client's financial situation, their goals, their risk tolerance, all in a matter of seconds. 
So it's like having a like a super powered financial analyst working for each client 24 seven. Yeah, exactly. But it's more than just crunching numbers. We're talking about AI tools that can actually identify investment opportunities that a human advisor, you know, might miss or even just automatically adjust portfolios based on real time market data. Wow. They can even like help advisors communicate more effectively with their clients, you know, based on all this data they're processing. So it's not about replacing humans with robots. It's about giving those human advisors like superhuman abilities, basically. Exactly. Augmenting their capabilities. And here's where it gets even more interesting, right? Morgan Stanley is also using AI to really personalize the client experience on a whole other level. They're developing these tools that can tailor financial advice to individual communication styles, like right. how someone prefers to learn even their actual life goals. Oh, wow. So instead of getting like the same cookie cutter financial advice that everyone else gets, their clients are getting recommendations specifically tailored to their needs and like their dreams. You got it. It's about making financial advice more accessible, more relevant, and honestly, more engaging. That makes sense. And that's a huge part of why they're attracting so many new clients, especially like younger generations who just expect these personalized digital experiences. Okay, yeah, this is all making a lot more sense now. They're using AI not just to, like, crunch data, but to actually understand their clients in a way that just wasn't possible before. It's like they're building a financial GPS that can guide each client on their own unique path. But, I don't know, it can't just be about the technology, right? It has to connect back to that, like, rock-solid reputation they've built in wealth management, doesn't it? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Technology is a tool, right? Mm -hmm. It can only take you so far. You need that foundation of trust and expertise and a genuine commitment to your client's well-being. That's where Morgan Stanley's legacy really comes in. So they're combining this like cutting-edge technology with decades of experience and this client-first approach. It's like they found the perfect recipe for success in this new world, in this new financial world. It's a powerful combination. They're proving you don't have to choose between, you know, being this tech savvy innovator or a trusted advisor. You can be both. This is like blowing my mind. We've gone from record profits to strategic bond bets to AI powered wealth management. Every time I think I've got a handle on Morgan Stanley's success, there's like mm -hmm. another layer. But, you know, we can't forget about the bigger picture here. Like, how does all of this impact? the average investor. What's the takeaway for someone listening who isn't, you know, managing millions of dollars? That's the crucial question, right? What does Morgan Stanley success actually mean for you, the listener? What are those broader trends at play here that everyone should be aware of? Exactly. Don't leave us hanging. What are the like key insights that we can pull from this deep dive that, you know, maybe aren't immediately obvious? You know, there's one in particular that I think is incredibly relevant, especially in today's world, and it actually ties back to something we discussed earlier, adaptability. Okay, so how does adaptability fit into all of this? I mean, we've seen how Morgan Stanley adapted to a changing market with their investment banking strategy. Mm. But is there something more to it? There's a there's a deeper lesson here about the importance of, of embracing change, not just in the markets, but in every aspect of our lives. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this whole adaptability thing and why it matters so much, especially now. Okay, adaptability. So we saw how Morgan Stanley adapted to a changing market, right, with that whole investment banking strategy. And they were early to capitalize on AI for wealth management. But how does that translate to, like, the average person? It's not like we can all just become bond traders or AI programmers overnight. You're right. It's not about copying their exact moves. It's about recognizing that things change and fast. The financial landscape, tech, even just like how we work and live, it's all changing at this crazy pace. And the people who can adapt quickly, who are open to new ideas, new ways of doing things, those are the ones who are going to thrive. So it's less about specific skills and more about like a mindset, like being okay with change and uncertainty. Exactly. Think about it. Even within Morgan Stanley, right? their willingness to really embrace AI, that's adaptability in action. Yeah. They could have easily stuck with, you know, the traditional ways of doing wealth management, but they saw that technology, it was a game changer. So they adapted and now, well, now they're reaping the benefits. That's a really good point. They didn't just rest on their laurels, you know, they were willing to learn new things, to evolve, even to disrupt their own business model to stay ahead of the curve. And that's such a powerful lesson for all of us, no matter what we do. Think about it. What are the big changes happening in your field? What skills are going to be in high demand five, 10 years down the line, even if they seem kind of irrelevant now? 
The more adaptable we are, the better equipped we'll be to handle whatever comes next, good or bad. It's about being proactive, not reactive. Like, don't wait for the world to change around you. Anticipate the change. Embrace it. Maybe even be the one driving that change. Exactly. And don't be afraid to learn new things, even if it's outside your comfort zone, right? Yeah. The skills you pick up today, those could be what set you apart in the job market of tomorrow. This has been, I don't know, kind of mind-blowing. We started with Morgan Stanley's earnings and somehow ended up with, like, a whole philosophy for navigating the future. It's all connected, though, right? I mean, Morgan Stanley's success, it's like this microcosm of all the massive forces that are shaping the world around us. And by understanding their journey, we get these little glimpses into our own paths to success. So to kind of wrap things up here, what's the, like, one big takeaway you want listeners to walk away with today? Embrace change. Be adaptable and never, ever stop learning. The future belongs to the people who are brave enough to evolve. Amazing. And on that note, we'll leave you to you know ponder these ideas and see how they apply to your own life. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into, well, finance, technology, and the power of adaptability. Catch you next time.